Good morning, this is Deborah Cargo coming to you from Valdosta, Georgia, for our Bible study in Hebrews chapter 3. Hebrews chapter 3, starting in verse 1. Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus. This is directed to the believers in Jesus Christ. In fact, this is directed to those who have made Jesus their Lord, as well as their Savior. Jesus is the great high priest of all believers. He intercedes for us continually before the Father. Let us consider these followers of Jesus in the following verses. Second Peter 1 verses 3 through 9 according as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness to the knowledge of the him that hath called us to glory and virtue whereby are given unto us exceedingly great and precious nature precious promises that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust and beside this given all diligence add to your faith virtue and to virtue knowledge and to knowledge temperance and to temperance patience and to patience godliness and to godliness brotherly kindness and to brotherly kindness charity for if these things be in you and abound they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our lord jesus christ but he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see Afar off and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. We can easily see that there is a lot to be to be in the call of God. God expects our life to be so different from the life the people of the world uh, live that we will be called peculiar people. Hold on just one second. I got this set for friends and it's supposed to be I want it set for public all right now Hebrews chapter 3 verse 2 who was faithful to him that appointed him as also Moses was faithful in all his house. We do not want to belabor this point, but the Father sent them both on a mission. The difference in the two is that Jesus was the real deliverer and Moses was his shadow. The last statement on this that I will make now is that Moses was leading his people to their promised land. Jesus is leading us to our eternal promised land. Verse 3. For this man was counted worthy of more glory than Moses, and as much as he who had built the house had more honor than the house. As we said above, Jesus is the real thing. Moses is his shadow. Jesus Christ was the creator of all the world and everything in it. Moses, as great as he was, was still Jesus' creator. Zechariah 6, verse 12, 13. And speak unto him, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, 
Behold, the man whose name is the branch, and he shall grow up out of his place, and he shall build the temple of the Lord. Even he shall build the temple of the Lord, and he shall bear the glory, and shall sit and rule upon his throne. And he shall be a priest upon his throne, and the council of peace shall be between them both. From the foundation of the world, Jesus was the builder. Amen. And in verse 4, we read, For every house is built by some man, but he that builds all things is God. Amen. So, um, like it said in uh, Romans, John 1, 1 through 3, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made, made that was made. John 1, 14. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. Ah. We beheld his glory. And the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Amen. These scriptures in John, which we have used over and over in this series of lessons, leave no doubt at all who built everything. Jesus Christ was the word of God in heaven. As we read in verse 14 above. We also read. We also read. Above that the word made everything in the first chapter uh, in the first uh, okay. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Now go back and look at Hebrews chapter 3, verse 4. And you will see the full impact of what it's saying. I will show just one more scripture and then go on. Hebrews 1, verse 2. Hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. Hebrews 3, verses 5 and 6. And Moses verily was faithful in all his house as a servant for a testimony of those things which were to be spoken after. But Christ is a son over his own house, whose house are we, if we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm unto the end. So, 1 Corinthians 6, verse 19. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, that which ye have of God, 
and ye are not your own. Second Corinthians 6, verse 16. And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. We see above that the salvation that Moses brought was for the body here on this earth. This salvation for the people was a shadow of the great salvation to come. Just as the first Adam was the man of the flesh, and the second Adam, which was Jesus Christ, was spirit. We see these two salvations were flesh and spirit. Let's look at one more scripture. It should really clear this up for us. Galatians 2, verse 20. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. In the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. This leaves no doubt that we Christians are Christ's above here on the earth. Realizing this, how could we continue in sin? Verse 7 of Hebrews 3, verse 7 and verse 8. Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost said, today if ye will hear his voice, Harden not your hearts, as in the propagation, the day of temptation, and the wilderness. At that time, Israel had been out of Egypt for only one month and had repeatedly witnessed God's miraculous, miraculous deliverance and provision. This incident became symbolic of Israel's temp temp temptation of God. David in Psalms 95 uses it to speak of Israel's continuous rebellion throughout the 40 years in the wilderness. Verse 9 and 10. When your father tempted me, proved me, and saw my works 40 years, wherefore I was grieved with that generation and said, They do always err in their heart, and they have not known my ways. Second Timothy 3 verses 1 through 5. This know also that in the last days, perilous time shall come. For men shall be lovers of their selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedience to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, Incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, highly minded, high minded, lovers of pleasure, more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof from such turn away. This leaves no doubt of not only what time we are living in, but also what we must do. We must separate ourselves from this type of life. One more scripture and we will have this complete. Second Chronicles. I love this scripture. 714. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my faith and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal, heal their land. God is the God of individuals. You do not have to follow the crowd. Repent and live for God. Live your faith in Jesus Christ every day. Be a separated people for Christ. Verse 10. Wherefore I was grieved with that generation and said they do always err in their heart and they have not known not my ways. The Holy Ghost is saying to them that they should learn from their mistakes. Whatever you do, do not harden your heart to God. God was grieved with that generation because in spite of all the miracles he did, they still did not have faith in him. 
Faith in God pleases him more than anything else. We read at one point where God was so disappointed in man that he wished he had not made him. Genesis 6, verse 6, and he repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth and it grieved him at it in his heart. And we're going to the second part of in my notes. Hebrews 3, verse 11. So I swear in my wrath they shall not enter into my rest. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 8. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing that one day is with the Lord as a ten as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. Verse 12. Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. Mark, an evil heart of unbelief. All men are born with such a heart. Jeremiah 17, verse 9. In the case of these Hebrews, the evil manifested itself in disbelief of the gospel, which moved them in the opposite way from God. Mark 7, verse 21 through 23. For from within our, out of the heart of man proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thieves, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lavishness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within and defile this man. We are born in sin and all are our life long. The lust of the flesh tries to draw us away from sin. No, excuse me. The lust of the flesh tries to draw us away from God. When we become a Christian, we become a new creature in Christ. The desire of our heart should be to please God. We may sin sometime or other. And quickly repent, but it must not be the desire of our heart to sin. We must not have a simple way of life. Verse 13, but exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 2. Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reproof. Rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. John 9, verse 4. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day, the night cometh when no man can work. We are warned over and over in the Bible to make use of the day because we have no idea whether there will be even be a tomorrow or not. Do not put off salvation. This might be your last opportunity. When Jesus returns, we are to be working, trying to get one more into the kingdom. Verse 14. For we are made protectors of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. Romans 7, verse 19 through 20. For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. Now if I do that I would not, it is no more that I that do it, but sin that dwells in me. This does not mean that Paul was a simple man. It just means that once in a while, his flesh, for a moment, would overcome his spirit. Paul lived as good as anyone could. He said at the end that he had run a good race and had a crown of glory waiting him. Paul had no desire in his heart to sin. Hello, Cindy and Faith. Thank you for joining. If we are a Christian, that should be the way we live too. We should all the time desire to live a pleasing life to God. 
Galatians 3, verse 27. For as many of you have, have been baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. Christ. Christ is in us, and we are in him if we are a Christian. We are grafted into the tree of life, which is Jesus Christ our Lord. Verse 15. While it is said today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your heart, as in the provocation. This is not a good thing for a Christian to do. God loves us and has our best interest at heart. He did not take your loved ones to get even with you. Don't turn against God when you need him the most. He is our comfort. If there is ever a time to be irritated with anyone, we should be irritated with our own shortcomings. 16 and 17. For some, when they had heard, did provoke, how be it not all that came out of Egypt by Moses, but with whom was he grieved 40 years? Was it not then with them that had sinned, whose carcasses fell in the wilderness? God forgave them over and over, just like he does us. But there was a day of reckoning and there will be one for us too. Someday God will say, that is enough. God is a forgiven God, but he is also a God of judgment. First Corinthians 10, 1 verse through 11. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea, and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and did all eat the same spiritual meat, and did all drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. But with many of them God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things were our examples to the intent we should not lust after things after evil things as they also lusted. Neither be ye adulterers as were some of them as it is written. The people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. Neither let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of serpents. Neither murmur ye as some of them also murmur and were destroyed of the destroyer. Now all these things happened unto them for examples and they are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. And in 1 Corinthians 10, verse 12 through 13, Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. God will help us if we will let him. Stay in the will of the Lord and you cannot fail. Verses 18 and verse 19. And to whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest, but to them that believe not. Hebrews 11 verse 6. But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And in verse 19, so we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. Mark 16, verse 16. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. This is just about as clear as it could be made. Those who do not have faith in Jesus Christ will wind up in hell. To be saved, we must believe in our heart and confess with our mouth. One more time, I will give my favorite scripture just on this. Romans 10, 9. 
and if thou shalt confess with thy mouth that the Lord, with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Live for God, live your faith in Jesus Christ every day. Be a separated people for Christ. Thank you and God bless you for joining me.